Hello and welcome back to another narrated tour of Somewhere to Go and Something to See in Scotland. Today I actually took a tour of a very famous building in Glasgow, Kelvin Grove Art Gallery and Museum. This place is impressive to say the least. Now, I thought I would take you on a bit of a tour around the uh, art gallery and museum itself. I'm not going to go into various pieces. You can certainly sit back, enjoy and see some of the, the sites that I saw. But I just thought I'd give you a quick history of the building itself. Now, this is a, such a statement piece in Glasgow's heritage, history and on its skyline. This magnificent structure stands a testament the city's rich cultural heritage and it's been an integral part of Glasgow's artistic landscape since its inception. Now, the Kelvin Grove Art Gallery is located in the picturesque Kelvin Grove Park. It was officially opened to the public in around May 1901. Its construction was commissioned in 1891 and carried out by a talented Scottish architect called Sir John W. Simpson. Simpson was known for his skilful fusion of Spanish Baroque and English Renaissance architectural styles. He designed the building to exhibit a grand and imposing appearance, and I think he met the brief on that. As we delve into the historical roots of this stunning building, it is crucial to recognise the broader content in which it was built. The late 19th century was a period of great progress and prosperity for Glasgow, which was then a flourishing industrial centre. Now you can have a conversation about if it is now, that's another story altogether. But its roots are in buildings and its museums like this. The city has become a hub of innovation, of commerce, culture and growing desire to establish its artistic identity. Kelvin Grove Art Gallery and Museum stands a testament to Glasgow's commitment to fostering cultural appreciation and education. It houses a vast collection of art, artefacts and historical objects covering various disciplines such as the fine arts and natural history. As we stroll through its halls and enter its rooms you can encounter masterpieces from renowned artists as Rembrandt, Van Gogh, even Salvador Dali and some of our very own, such as the Glasgow Boys and Salvador Dali, offering a journey through the ages of artistic expression. There really is something for everybody hanging on these walls. One of its unique features of it is its stunning organ, affectionately known as the Salvation Army Organ. This magnificent instrument is a cornerstone of the museum and provides regular recitals, adding a melodious touch to the visitor's appreciation. There's generally on a Saturday or a Sunday a recital at 1pm and at 3pm and I think through the course week it's just 3pm, it's on for about 20 minutes, half an hour and to hear this is unbelievable, in fact I'll let you hear some of that now.
pretty impressive and what a sound my microphone pickup probably wasn't doing it justice but what a stunning thing to hear Beyond its architectural grandeur and impressive collections, the museum has played an essential role in shaping the cultural landscape of Glasgow over the years. It's been a place of learning, inspiration, catering to both locals and visitors alike. Thousands of schoolchildren have passed through its doors, leaving with a sense of wonder and appreciation for arts, sciences, history from all over the world. It actually is a place that Glasgow and Glaswegians and even tourists, would you believe, hold very dear to their hearts. And you can understand why. It has stories and tales to tell. It's got things from all over the world that that for some people would never ever have dreamed about seeing. It's actually worth noting that when I was doing some research on this building, I did see something saying that during the war, the museum was actually closed to the public, well, for obvious reasons, but it transformed itself into a more of a wartime institution. It served as an air raid shelter, providing refuge to over a thousand people during the intense bombings that hit parts of Glasgow. As the decades have passed, the museum has undergone several renovations and expansions to accommodate its growing collections and meet the modern standards. People want to see new things all the time. However, it's never lost sight of its primary purpose to be a place of cultural enrichment and enlightenment for generations to come. For me, the the art gallery is a place to go and just relax, find something new. When I was there, I actually went to the Mary Quant exhibition, which I was particularly interested in, in fashion and something so iconic. But I couldn't film in there, unfortunately. But it's, they have exhibitions on through the course of the year that might take your fancy. So if you're ever in town, see what's on. The exhibitions themselves, you do have to pay, but the rest museum is free. You can walk in and it costs you nothing to wonder at some of these magnificent pieces. We have to ensure that the heritage of this building and what's in this building is seen by as many people and they understand the importance of these pieces, of these artworks, of these sculptures. There's so much in there to take in. It has to inspire the minds of future generations and current generations it has to inspire. You might go in there and see something and go, I'm going to research that, which I, actually, as you know me, I often do. I find a place and I research it afterwards. I'm going to just show you some more pieces. You can certainly research. Um, You may have seen pictures of the big elephant. Um, That's quite an important piece for Glasgow. Um, There's busts there. There's the expressions hanging from the the ceiling. There's so much that, and as I say, I'll show some more video. Let you enjoy it. Sit back, relax. Um, and like one other thing that I might want to throw in here is this a Glasgow urban myth and I stress this so importantly it's an urban myth that the architect and designer of the building built it back to front so some of the shots of the big stairs at the front next to Argyll Street they should have been on the other side of the building and the other stairwell with the monument in the middle that should have been at the front of the building and supposedly the architect took his own life because of that now that's that's uh, it's as I say it's such an urban myth this never happened but it's a slight way that Glaswegians have fun with it because they think it's a funny anecdote to tell So if you ever hear that story, it's rubbish, but you may hear it nonetheless. The actual original museum um, was in a place called Kelvin Grove House. Now, what I'm going to do is, I'm 
I've done another video in Kelvin Grove Park and part of the park is where the house used to be. Now, it was opened in 1870, so the one we're in just now was 1901. In 1870, Kelvin Grove House was a mansion, it was a stately home. It was originally owned by one of the Lord Provosts of Glasgow, Patrick Cahoon. The Kelvin Grove House had a continuously growing collection and it led to a new part being added to the house between 1874 and 76, give or take. The original Kelvin Grove House, which stood in the park itself, was demolished in 1899-1900, with the museum wing being demolished in 1911, but everything was shipped from there across the road. So if you're in Kelvin Grove Park, you will see where the big, I say new building from 1900 is just now. The museum is now the most, or one of the most popular free to enter visitor attractions in Scotland. Now, I've seen viewings and I've seen visitor connections between two to four million people a year. That's huge. That is absolutely massive figures. Um, at one point, I think it hit about five to six million visitors. Um, so yeah, it's it's got a lot of footfall through it and it's free to enter. If you want to make a donation, there's with donation boxes. You can buy a pencil, you can buy a booklet, a pen, whatever you want to do. And that helps fund wee bits there. At its core, it's a place for to go on a free day out. Great for families, fantastic for families. If you've got screaming kids and they don't know what to do and they're bored, Take them there, go there, because they will just be in awe of certain things. They get a place to go ooh and ah and run about and find something on the next corner. It's a fantastic place for all ages, from the grandparents down to the grandkids. It's excellent. Collections within the museum, we have, as I said before, we have Egyptian collections, we've got expressive arts, we have arms and armoury in one, one room. There's, there's art pieces that... The big one is the Christ of St John on the Cross by Salvador Dali. And there's many stories regarding that painting with regards to is it real, is it not? Has the, is it a copy? Did somebody steal it at one point? Is it Glasgow's? Is it... You know, there's so many people that want to lay claim to it and it's... Who knows? Who knows? But it is a very strange piece. It's in a room on its own. And again, you'll see some pictures and see some video of it. It's very bizarre. The perspective of it is very dally. Very, yeah, very interesting to see. Whether you're religious or whether you're not, it's something to certainly go and stand for a minute or two and just go, whoa, wow, okay, cool. So, in conclusion, and I say I will let you have a look and just enjoy this. You can turn the narration off and just watch what I recorded. Um, but I just wanted to lay the, the foundation, lay the groundwork for this building. Um, it's phenomenal. The every outside and inside is always something to see. 
Um, so yeah, I hope you enjoy this video. And I hope you did enjoy this video. And if you're new here, thank you so much for watching and taking the time to listen and be part of the Scotsland family. You're in good company. Welcome. Um, and if you haven't subscribed already, please remember to hit that subscribe button, share it out to all your friends and family. Um, and until next time, guys, thank you so much. Look after yourselves. Take care. Bye-bye.